Hello everyone, welcome to another Tutor Terrific video. This is uh, our physics course, chapter one, lesson three. Um, we are going over uh, the basics of physics, including measurements, units, estimating, and problem solving. In today's lesson, we're gonna look at prefixes and unit conversions. Now this might seem like a game to some of you, a cruel game, or some sort of crazy maze you have to go through, but it is absolutely essential to understanding physics and how numbers are used and manipulated in physics. So let's get started. So let's first talk about prefixes. So physically speaking, prefixes are the symbols that are added to the front of any word, but in physics especially, or chemistry, they're added to the front of units to modify their value by specifically powers of 10. So some examples would be things like kilo, milli, and nano. Now I know all of you have experience with this because of your background in chemistry. So I can add kilo to the front of meter and it becomes a kilometer. Or in other words, as we say um, in more conversational English, kilometer. Uh, the second, I can add the milli prefix in front of second and get millisecond. And gram, I can add nano in front of gram and I can get nanogram. Now these prefixes have different meanings depending on which one we use. And this metric prefix scale is perfect for understanding what each one means. So here are those prefixes. Now a power of 10 is associated with each and every prefix that you see. Uh, it's used to show how much larger, by, by a certain factor of power of 10, the value is than the single unit when the prefix is preceding the unit. So for example, we saw kilometers back there, kilo 10 to the three. 10 to the 3 meters. So a kilo stands for 1,000 or 10 to the 3 times whatever unit it precedes. For example, let's set something up. Let's pick a unit, the meter. Let's pick a prefix, the kilo. When you place them together, you get the kilometer. This is how you read the chart. One kilometer stands for 10 to the 3 regular meters. Okay? I've gone all the way out to Terra. Those of you who uh, work in computers, you know these uh, prefixes, kilo, mega, giga, and Terra stand for thousand, million, billion, and trillion, respectively. So that's how these work, and that's how they're used. We're gonna look at micro, nano, and pico throughout physics. And we're gonna use centi quite a lot when we're talking about meters. So let's practice using this scale to convert. Now, I'm gonna use the factor label method to do these prefix conversions that I'm asking you. I'm asking you to go from one prefixed unit back to the standard unit at first. So look here, we have 100 mm. Well, milli is the uh, abbreviation for, m is the abbreviation for milli, meters. So we have millimeters here, okay? And you can see up at the top of our prefix scale here, the abbreviation for each of these prefixed units, okay? So 100 millimeters, convert that back to standard units, which would be standard meters. So here's how that's done with this factor label method here. We write out the starting unit first, which would be 100 millimeters. We put the desired units on top of those same starting units, but we equate a certain quantity in the desired units to that quantity in the starting units. And then the starting units will of course cancel and we'll get our desired units. This is called the factor label method. Let's see how it works for converting 100 millimeters to meters. So if you look here, we have 100 millimeters. Then we place meters, the desired units on top, millimeters, the starting units on bottom, and we set equivalent quantities of them using the chart. The chart says that one millimeter is equal to 10 to the minus three meters. And so what I end up doing is taking 100 and multiplying it by 10 to the three. You can see that you can cancel the uh, starting units because they're on top and bottom. So 100 times 10 to the three over here needs to be converted to proper scientific notation. As we uh, saw in the last video, we would move the decimal over two places to the left and add two by doing that to the exponent. So we get one times 10 to the minus one meters, and that is correct. 100 millimeters is one times 10 to the minus one, or 0.1 meters. What about 2.5 mg? M, 
Capital M stands for Mega. So this is Megagrams. We don't usually use that very much, but uh, it's possible. You could use it if you wanted to. 2.5 Megagrams. Convert that to regular grams. Here we have our M standing for Mega, which stands for 10 to the 6. So we'll put our starting units first. 2.5 Megagrams. Put our desired units next on top, divided by our starting units. And uh, we'll cancel those if we want, but the main thing is the numbers we put in. According to this chart, one megagram is equal to 10 to the 6 grams. So again, we're going to multiply. Now this is when we multiply these in perfect scientific notation right out the box. 2.5 times 10 to the 6 grams, or 2.5 million grams. 775 nanoseconds. Nano's way down here, a billionth, or 10 to the minus 9. So we're talking about 775 really small units of time. Place that first by itself, then create this equivalent uh, numerator and denominator, converting from nanoseconds to seconds. One nanosecond is equal to 10 to the minus 9 seconds. We multiply those together, and you can see that we have to move the decimal two places to the left to get it in proper scientific notation. Add 2 to the exponent, we'll get 7.75 times 10 to the minus 7 seconds. Okay, so now we've practiced going from prefixed units to uh, regular standard units using the factor label method. And now we are going to try the opposite way. I'm going to have some large or really small numbers written with standard units, and I want you to see how using prefixed units can really help you instead of scientific notation. All these numbers are in scientific notation, but they might be easier to understand using a prefix. 7.33 times 10 to the 7 seconds. Maybe using a prefix could help you see it better, so we're going to convert to a prefix. It's done really similarly to the above factor label method, except we're starting with an unprefixed unit. 7.33 times 10 to the 7 seconds. I'm going to multiply that by this fraction. I'm going to go to the nearest uh, power of 10. Which prefix has the nearest power of 10 to 10 to the 7? Mega. 10 to the 6. It's only one away. So I'm going to multiply um, my 7.33 times 10 to the 7 seconds by 1 megasecond over the equivalent 10 to the 6 seconds. Now, in order to show how this works, I'm going to say that I'm actually multiplying this number by 10 to the minus 6, which is equivalent to 1 over 10 to the 6. Now it's just simply subtracting these exponents, or rather adding them, because uh, we consider adding when they're on, both on top. 7 plus negative 6 makes positive 1. So I really have, in correct scientific notation, 7.33 times 10 to the 1 megaseconds, or 73-ish, millions of seconds. All right, next one. 1 1.0 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. That's a pretty small length. Maybe a prefix uh, close by, as power of 10 is concerned, would be better suited to see this number. So, uh, as you can see, 10 to the minus 4 is closest to 10 to the minus 3. So we're going to use milli. So let's uh, go ahead and set this up. 1.0 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. Multiply that by my equivalent fraction here by getting to millimeters. 1 millimeter is 10 to the minus 3 meters. So you can cancel these if you want, you end up with millimeters. And we see we're dividing by a 10 to the negative 3, which is the same as multiplying by 10 to the positive 3. So 1.0 times 10 to the minus 4 times 10 to the positive 3. Let's add those exponents, we'd get minus 1. So we have 1.0 times 10 to the minus 1 millimeters in proper scientific notation. So about a tenth of a millimeter. All right, and last one. My goodness, 7 times 10 to the 13 days. Eesh. Let's look at the nearest prefix for 10 to the 13. That would be tera, 10 to the 12. So I'm going to convert regular days to tera days. 7 times 10 to the 13 days, you multiply that by 1 tera day over 10 to the 12 regular days. 10 to the 12, by the way, stands for trillion. Tera is trillion. And so we would cancel the days. We'd end up with 7 times 10 to the 13 times 10 to the negative 12. So 13 minus 12, that's 1. So this would uh, revert to 7 times 10 to the 1 
teradays, or 70 teradays, tens of trillions of days. That's a lot of days, but this is a, an example of using our conversions for prefixes. Now, we could go beyond prefixes. We could convert between different units altogether, not just a prefixed version of a unit and the standard version of the same unit. It's a very similar method, okay? But we are going to need something more than just this prefix conversion chart. We're gonna need what I call conversion factors. These are equations that relate a quantity in one unit to that exact same quantity in another unit, another unit. So I call this a conversion factor. Here are some examples that we probably know pretty well. Uh, one mile, 5,280 feet. One inch, that's 2.54 centimeters. One hour, that's equivalent to 3,600 seconds. That's a very common one that is very useful in lots of these chapters in physics. Then we've got the mole, which you know from chemistry. That stands for 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles and one pound uh, kilograms on Earth. Each quantity on the left is equivalent to that same quantity on the right in a different unit. How do you get from one unit to the other with a conversion factor? You use the factor label method again. You start with the units you have and the quantity of them and you multiply that by this fraction which is uh, an equivalent fraction where the top, the units you want, is equated to the denominator in a different quantity, the units you have using that conversion factor. The units you have will of course cancel and you'll end up with the units you want. So let's, let's try a simple conversion. 195 pounds to kilograms on Earth. And you'll learn more about why I say on Earth and have to quantify it that way later. 195 pounds. Well, according to uh, a conversion factor that I didn't show you, but it does exist, one pound is equal to 4.5, excuse me, 0.454 kilograms. And so we can put one of those on top of the other since they're equivalent. And so this fraction would equal one. But since we're converting units, the numbers are going to change. So I'll put pounds on bottom so that they'll cancel. It was the unit I had to start with. The unit I want is now on top. So I'm gonna have 195 times 0.454 kilograms. And when I do the calculation, that's gonna equal 88.53 kilograms. However, I can't write that as my answer based on significant figures rules, which we are sticklers for in science, especially physics and chemistry. What you need to do now is you need to round to the proper number of significant figures, which would be three for this problem because the initial starting spot had 195 pounds as its measurement. That's three sig figs. You never use a conversion factor you always assume that each thing in here has infinite sig figs. It's an exact number. So you go by the initial measurement. Three sig figs it had, and so I have to round to the tenths place here to have three sig figs in my final answer. Okay, some conversions take more than one step to do. There isn't a conversion factor to go right from the unit you start with to the unit you want. So you'd have to use what this uh, diagram calls linking units or just multiple factor label method fraction steps to get from one place to the last place you desire, okay? Everything is gonna cancel when you write it first on top in one spot and then on bottom in the next section of your calculation. Here's an example, 100 yards to meters. Now there may be a nice conversion factor out there, but I don't know it. So I'm gonna use multiple conversions to go from yards all the way to meters. If I have 100 yards, I could convert that to feet the following way. There's three feet in every yard, so that's a conversion factor. The yards will cancel, and I've multiplied 100 by three. Now I'm in feet. Now I need to get to meters, so I'll go through inches. Okay, so inches, there's 12 inches in one foot, so now I've canceled the feet units, and I've multiplied my result by 12. Then I could go from inches to centimeters because one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. So I cancel the inches, now I multiply by 2.54. Now I'm in centimeters, I want meters. Aha, I snuck in a prefix conversion for you. If you look at the chart, one meter is equal to 100 centimeters, or 10 to the two. You could have also written one centimeter equals 10 to the minus two meters, which is the way I did it on uh, my images. 
And when you multiply these all out, you get 91.44 meters. Notice that prefix conversion there, okay? The last thing you would need to do is uh, use proper sig figs here. My original measurement really technically had one, or you could put a decimal at the end of that zero and have three to get, if you had three, 91.4 meters. If you had one, you'd have to round down to 90 meters. All right, one more practice. This is gonna also involve both prefix conversions and unit conversions. 1.7 megaseconds into hours. I wanna start with the prefix conversion. You don't have to, but it'd be nice to look at seconds instead of megaseconds. That's one step according to the prefix conversion chart. 1.7 megaseconds, well that's 10 to the six seconds. One megasecond, 10 to the six seconds. So I can cancel those megaseconds and now I'm in seconds. Now we need to convert between units to get to hours. We're gonna complete those necessary unit conversions now. It takes a couple steps if you do not know the direct co uh, conversion between hours and seconds. You could go through minutes. So right now I'm in seconds, so I'm gonna divide by 60 seconds to get to minutes. One minute equals 60 seconds. Then I'm gonna get to hours by dividing by 60 again because there's 60 minutes in each hour. Now with all my units canceled, being on top and bottom, in successive sections of this conversion, I have hours as my final unit. Now the raw answer in the calculator is 472.22222 forever. That's what I put this bar up here for, to repeating hours. I cannot write that as my final answer. Why, why, why? Go back to your original measurement you were given, 1.7 megaseconds. How many sig figs does that have? It has two. So I have to round this to two significant figures. Okay, you'd have to round to the tens place. So the two after it would round down, so you'd have 470. For some people this is a little odd because you're past the decimal on the left side. So some people would immediately write this in scientific notation so that it's clear that zero is not significant as I just showed you in the last video. Now I only have this two significant digits, 4.7 times 10 to the two hours. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. That's it for this lesson. I'll see you next time. This is Falconator signing out.